We never intended to be selling these. It's been kind of a surprise. We just developed this to help me with my weaving and people were so excited about it that we've ended up finding some place to make them locally and it's been kind of a journey. So I hope this helps somebody. I wanna make sure you all have a visual to help you learn how to use these bars. This is what your bar will look like straight out of the box. The bolts and wing nuts will be on it and you'll have your bag of pegs as well. The other side of your bar has holes drilled for the dowels. They are one inch apart and I am actually going to show you how to warp with this tool right now. So to get this bar ready to warp with, you're simply going to remove your wing nuts all three. Make sure you keep them close because you are going to need them. Okay, once they're off, you're just going to remove the top of the bar. It's a little hard with one hand. I recommend you use two. And set it also close to the bottom of the bar. You'll need this later as well. So I'm going to go ahead and warp 12 inches and I'm going to pull out 12 pegs. As I said, the pegs are one inch apart on center. So I will actually um, put six on either side of the center bolt. So that's fine and you can use this for all the way up to the 36 inches or you can go any width you want smaller don't feel like you can't use it if you have a 12 inch loom I'm about to warp for 12 inches but we did want to make this so that if somebody wants to move up to a larger loom they can do that without having to you know buy bigger bars so clamps are the only thing that you're gonna need additionally to use this bar. We just didn't include them because most people have a set around the house or can get their hands on a set very easily and it didn't seem like it made sense to ask you to pay to ship something that you could get so easily at home. So, so just like you would with your warping peg you definitely want this to be clamped on very tight but it isn't any different if it's your warping peg you really want to clamp down tight okay you can see it's really clamped down there tightly you do want that i'm going to warp this for a 5 dpi heddle and this is actually set up as a loom because my loom is dressed and I can't use it for this right now, but it's no different. So if this heddle was in your loom, this is exactly how you're going to do it. So this heddle is 5 DPI, which is an odd number. And as I said, these pegs or dowels are one inch apart. So you want one inch of worth of warp on each peg. I'm going to show you how to do that with an odd number. But like if you had a 10 DPI heddle, you would put five loops because each loop is like coming forward and going back, it's two ends. So each loop would be two ends. But I'm gonna show you how to do an odd number. Okay, so you're gonna pull a loop through your heddle and you're gonna bring it over to your warping bar. and just very simply put it over your dowel. Now, you, while you're doing this part, you do wanna try to hold even tension, but it does not have to be perfect. So just make an effort to not have any big sags. That's definitely uh, something you'd wanna avoid, avoid even if you were using a warping peg. So it's basically the same. So this is actually two warp ends. I'm gonna show you how to spread the eye. So now that's four okay so to do an odd number i've got four ends on here i want five on each peg so i'm going to go over this to put a fifth end and then i'm going to go over the next peg and that's going to be the first end on that peg so i now have five ends on this one and one on this one 
So you can see now it's warped. There are five ends on each one of these pegs. I wanted to show you the other side. Okay, so this is what the other side looks like. After I have four ends on one, then I split the next loop and put the first end on the next one. So that's how it will look when you have an odd number. If you have an even number, you will not have it split going between these two pegs, okay? And then that's how it looks going straight into the heddle. You're gonna take your top bar and you're going to drop it right down over your bolts. Very easy. And then you need your wing nuts. That's why I said keep them close. You definitely want to screw this as tightly as you can do it really by hand. I, unless you have a weak grip strength, you can do this enough by hand. Otherwise you can always use like a channel lock or pliers to get it as tight as makes you comfortable. So there's a channel in this that really holds the yarn tight. You'll see. Okay, it's as easy as that. This warp is now stretched along here really tight and it is going nowhere. So I take all my pegs out. You can see those loops don't go anywhere, which is exactly what you want, right? Whatever paper you like to use to stabilize your warp when you roll it onto your beam, I recommend that you use something um, at this point too. I have tried it different ways. I have tried to get it into the clamp and that does work. So you can do it that way too. It's just not my preference. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and unclamp the bar. And then I like to just lay my paper on the top. This is drafting mylar. I get so many questions about this. Um, last time I looked, you could find it on dickblick.com. So, I like to just turn my bar a little and trap it, just like that. And then, I'll hold it on either side and just wind your bar up. Straight up to your heddle. So I'm gonna go right up to the heddle on this. Now, when you're on your loom, you can actually set this in the loom. I have some footage of this I'll insert. And you will slowly unroll this as you roll it onto your back beam. It is so easy, I love this. That's how easy this warping bar is to use. If you have questions, you can email me at neverendingknitnight at gmail.com.